No, it's come to my attention that we start every video and we don't introduce ourselves. Yes, it's come to both of our attentions. So, so I am Dom. I am Mom. We are scattered, we are scattered minds. minds. <laughs> Obviously, we're Can very chaotic. <laughs> and that's where the name came from. So, like mother, like daughter. But this is our calm. Our, our calm chaos. chaos. Yes. Because we are chaos. So, welcome. So, um, what are you drinking tonight? Introducing my red wine. I always like a dark oh. red blend. Look at the red glass. Okay, the but red. I have to tell you about this glass. Is so, real glass? No. No, I have to tell you about this. This is the coolest thing because I can't have real glass because I break everything. <laughs> but this actually unscrews, the bottom does, and it flips over and seals on the top. So it's a to-go wine glass. That is perfect for things like wine walks. For things like, and like me. <laughs> Dom. So it's like a purpley stem I love here. that. And it's like a little, it's just plastic. And it's this Cabernet, right? Because that's what you like. I do like Cabernet, but... I usually get a dark red blend, if oh. not a Cabernet. So I like a blend too. Yeah, dark red blend. Shiraz, That's what it is. Pinot. Yep. Um, I am drinking, <clears throat> it's funny you talk about the glass because I'm drinking an IPA and typically I don't care to drink beer from a can. Mm -hmm. I like it in a glass, Yeah. a frozen glass. But I should probably freeze you some glasses then. Yes, yeah. um, because I don't but think about it. like you, I, I used to have stemmed beer glasses and I like to drink my beer out of a stemmed glass. I broke three and that's what I had. See? So I'm thinking maybe, you know, they have aluminum now. <laughs> I, I will tell you though. Put it in the freezer. I don't like, I love, okay, so I don't that's usually I don't use this. I, you, I am not classy at all. And I was like, oh, I should probably put this on a wine glass because I should booze it she up. She usually drinks I'm... it right out of the bottle. No, <laughs> no I, I buy a box at a time. I can't just <laughs> slap the bag. <laughs> I mean, I could. Come on, milk it. <laughs> but um, I don't really like to drink out of plastic. I like the taste of drinking out of glass. Me when too. It's wine. And that's why I don't have an aluminum cup. And that's why cup. I don't like to, yep, aluminum cup. So I have my aluminum cup. So I've got my little pretty girl Stanley. But um, I have a straw because I don't like the way the aluminum tastes. So it has to be out of the straw. But this is just to look nice because usually I drink it out of like a Collins glass. This is also just to look glass. nice. No, it's because I don't have a frozen glass and I wanted to. Look, I'll work on this. Uh, uh, good behavior. Good behavior, yeah. Those are such cool it's cans. It's a crushable too. IPA. Yeah, it's a very cool can, as you can see. Odell. Ooh, it's got, what is it, 100 oh. calories? Is that what it says? 110. Ooh, oh, and 40 go. ABV. <laughs> what, is, what does ABV mean? Above. Uh, alcohol above. by volume. Alcohol by, oh, it's 40%. This is a strong beer. Well, I think that's about usual, isn't it? What's the, um, pers the, what's it called? Doesn't it have like... My favorite IPA is 9.5%. Oh, okay, it says 4 ABV, 4%, 4.0. Blind as a bat. There's hey, a bat on my I've shoes. had LASIK. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just have to point it out. She's just bats. a little batty. I love bats. I'm Batty. Oh, look it. Did I show you this? The bat on her straw. My bat that sits on top of my Yeah, straw. you got that in a package I saw. I did. But this is the best one. That's why. I oh, my it. God. That's He's so cute. So cute. Look at his little smile, little fangs. All right. Okay. <laughs> let's get to it. <laughs> All right. You have one more than me, so you start and finish. How's no, that? No, you... No. Because you have oh. to finish. Because you're going to... Okay. So, um, I'll start... I usually start. Okay, I'm starting with Miss Frida McFadden. So everybody raves about her. or Frida. It's a love or hate, man. I'm saying people either love her or hate her. And I love her twists. I think that they're fun. And there's always more than one. And it's like twist after twist after twist. And this one, <laughs> I have to be honest. Teacher. This is one of the only books that the, the very, very last, last, last twist. I didn't catch it. At first I was like I don't get it and I spoke it out loud and I said something to Frank just my husband and I was like hey um, I'm gonna explain this to you but it doesn't make sense to me so I'm gonna say it out loud and can you help me figure it out and he was like well what if it's this and I'm like that totally makes sense so he actually figured it out without reading the book yes yeah, spelled it out <laughs> for me and I was like duh but 
Um, very, very good. Uh, this is about two teachers, actually. So it's the teacher, but it's about a uh, husband, wife, teacher duo. They teach at the same school. They teach uh, high school students. And the male teacher is a very good looking guy. And um, he knows it, but he's married to this woman teacher who she constantly like, I, I don't know why he's with me. Like I'm average looking, you know, I'm not ugly, but so she's constantly like thinking about what he's not good enough. Yeah. What brought him to her? You know, why did he want to marry her? And so it's kind of this journey of her trying to figure out what their compatibility is. She doesn't understand why he wants to be with her, but they've been together for so long and they're married and they're trying to keep the marriage, but she's like more interested and in they, she wants to have a baby. She's not getting enough in her sex life. Like they're, they have this rigorous routinely once a month sex and once, you know, this is what we do every day and this is what's expected. And this um, is how it's supposed <clears throat> to be. Yeah. And then it, it gets a little quirky here because the students start getting involved in more, more than they should. Uh, so basically, it's one student, she's lost her dad. Um, he was an alcoholic, so she had a really bad life with him, but she lost her dad. And then she basically had this relationship with a teacher not not in a bad way of relationship with a teacher the previous year where he was trying to tutor her but everybody thought that it was icky icky yeah and so this teacher got fired but she was like it was completely innocent nothing happened like i nothing happened he gave me a ride home he was tutoring me i'm bad at math and i kind of looked up to him like a father figure because my father hasn't been around so anyways long story short she attaches to this male teacher that is married, the wife and husband duo. So she attaches to him the next year, and he is uh, tutoring, like, poetry. And she's really into poetry. She really wants to be a poet when she gets older, and she wants to write and that kind of thing. So they start uh, having, like, he's in charge of the newspaper for poetry or something like that, and she stays after school. And it's not just her, it's other kids too that are a part of this poetry deal anyways but she forms like this bond with him that is inappropriate basically and it seems to be the same thing that happened the year before and it just gets twisted after that it gets like fucked up gnarly you're like what is going on and all these twists and turns it would have to and... because it doesn't sound interesting at all to me up to now yeah so that's it's very <laughs> At first, it's very normal. It's very normal. And I'm like, oh, well, this is just, a, yeah, okay. But then it starts being, well, she falls in love with her teacher, and then her teacher's being inappropriate, and then this other teacher is finding out, but she's having an affair because she's not getting what she wants at home. And so it's all these twists and turns, and then you find out at the end even more twists and turns, and they... Yeah, so it's like pretty, it's, it's like you're really in high up. school. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, yeah, it's very. But well, I think I don't. No, I'm not my high school. I, don't I know think if you universe. read Frida, you understand because she makes things where it's really easy to follow. You can breeze through her books like really easily because it's just kind of you can form a picture very mm -hmm. easily from mm -hmm. what she writes, and so you breeze through it really quick. But the twists in there, and she's like, bam! Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, the ending of this was very good. So maybe a little slow because you have to get through the whole story of it. And it is very um, teenage-esque. But I liked it. I liked this one. I liked the ending. I liked this one more than a couple other of hers that I've read. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple on the back here. I read Never Lie, and that one's really popular. And I really like that one, but I'll talk about that another time. So, yeah. The Teacher. teacher. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, th I don't want to read that one. Yeah. It sounds too family Easy. drama. Yeah. Um, okay. Because it's not horror enough. I'm, I'm going to get into Cadaverous because I talked about it last week and I finished it this week. And I have to say, so <clears throat> at the end of the book, I'm like, huh, big sigh. <laughs> I forgot that it started with a... Uh, uh, an investigator? A, a writer? What? Who's the dude that, at the beginning, um, he is 
writing about what happened, a, a professor of occult studies. He's doing research on why what happened happened. So I got, you know, when I, la when I left you last with this, I didn't tell you much what happened, but he kills some pretty important people in his life in order to have the favor of the demon. And um, one of them specifically, I was just like, no way. I, really? Because... Because I could not imagine it. But, right. But um, what happens when the demon comes to be is pretty extreme. And it takes this book to the end of it. And then you find, you realize, oh, oh wow. yeah, this was a professor writing about what happened, the incident, and trying to understand it. Um, and I was disappointed by the ending. I feel like I was let down. I feel like it ended so abruptly. Abruptly, yes. That you're like, well, so what? Who cares about the rest of it? What what's going on now? Why where's the end of the world? Isn't supposed to, isn't the end of the world supposed to be coming? That's what it was all building up to that the end of the world was coming and this demon was trying to set things up for that. Um, but you don't really find that out until way towards the end. You do see what's happening, um, but you're you're kind of dropped on your bum. <laughs> dropped um, on your bum. However, as I said before, there's some really good music. The music list for this Did is look at it? amazing. Yes. And at the end of it, it gives you what they're saying were included for um, included for a warning so people didn't do this. Oh. <laughs> but it included pictures of the sigil oh, yeah, that yeah. they were carving into the bodies. And then a music appendix that you can scan and check out all the music that was... Played, played, or um, talked about right or, in the book because they played their set list from, was from the Big Four. Um, mm -hmm. So there's some great music, and I got to say, after checking that out at the end, I was much more impressed. Yeah, I <laughs> to feel include like that, something with that, that really it brought it together. Teared the book for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I kind of just forgot about that. I didn't care much for the ending. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's a good way to end. Rock out. <laughs> I mean, that's basically, I think, what he's getting at is like, yeah, fucking. So, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Read it if you want. Um, I, I'm, I'm, it wasn't a bad story. It was interesting, and it kept me reading it. I was let down a bit by the ending, but I think that if you're an avid reader, you could get through this in a few days and check out the music at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I read it pretty quick. Some books are just like that. I think that yeah. my pile here is basically like that. The ones I'm talking about today. So uh, I feel like I'll talk, <laughs> I'll talk about this one next because I've never really seen this one. Nice Girls. Ooh. So I, of course, pink. That's why I grabbed it because I'm like, this is a dark cover with bright pink yeah, it on like it. I neon. need it. And it's a, a, a clearance book. Bargain priced, of course. I'm for it. So basically, it's just another true crime uh, bookie book here. So true crime, like it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's. I don't know if this is a true story, but it's supposed to be like the true crime, like the true crime fr thriller type books. And basically, it, this is another one of those like teenage bringing in the teenage girls. I don't know how I how I set yeah, up for this young, one, but. Young, yeah. So this is a uh, a girl in a town, and she is uh, trying to figure out basically what happened to this these couple girls. She feels like they they've gone missing. She's not really sure what's happening. Um, she's hanging out with some friends that she. Um, okay, so. She's not a teenager anymore. She just went off to college, but she's coming back from college. So she got kicked out of college for a certain reason, which it's not specified in the book at the beginning, so we won't go there. But she's she's kicked out of college. She goes to an Ivy League college. She's, like, super smart. That's all that she cared about in high school. She has one friend who goes to another college. They're, like, completely across the country from each other. Her, uh... That was her best friend going through high school. She goes to an Ivy League school, gets kicked out, has to come back home and figure out her next plans for life. So when she's home, these two girls are murdered. She's, or they go missing, sorry. Um, she's trying to figure out what happened to these two girls. She ends up coming into contact with other people that she went to high school with, figuring out what they've done with their life. 
And she's still trying to like not tell anybody what happened with her and not tell anybody what's happening. So she is quiet on the hush hush and like, oh yeah, I'm on a break from school. I'm writing a story for my thesis. It brought me back home. She's breaking up this stuff. But she gets really into what's happening to these girls. She's like, I know something's up. Something's up. Something's going on. We got to figure this out. So she starts trying to figure out what's going on. And these other kids are helping her. These that she went to kids, high school with. Yeah. That were never her friend before. She got bullied. She was not huh. popular. She was a nerd. She just wanted to get good grades. Oh, but they think it's something weird is happening too. Yeah, so. but she's a different person now. And so they're like, oh, well, we can figure this out together. And so she starts figuring out, like, tying things together, figuring out everybody's story, going through. She's, like, doing her own detective work. But she's really digging into things that she's not supposed to be into. Oh. And so it kind of makes it a little twisty here. Um, one of the cops she went to high school with, so she thinks that, you know, he knows more. And then it all be, it all ends up being small town stuff. Everybody knows everybody, and everybody's on the what if. Watch out. Uh -huh. So it's it was good. It was an easy read. I feel like this is exactly what I have for my list today is easy reads. I kind of breeze through each one of these books that I am Sounds talking about today. But palate cleansers, it's kind of like that for yeah. me. Like I Sometimes I get into these books <clears throat> that have such a huge storyline. It takes me... Instead of two days to read, it takes me like a week. four, oh yeah, five. So this is not one of those. I read it in like two days. So easy one. Cool. Pretty a little mysterious. So we, we talk about palate cleansers a lot. And I keep saying, <clears throat> after I read this, I might need a palate cleanser. After I read this, it, the one that you gave me last week, keep it in the family. I'm going to start reading that this week. And it's not a palate cleanser. And no. I, but I think <clears throat> I, I was thinking about this today and I was like, I, she she does palate cleansers. <clears throat> she reads so many books that she's got to read something different in between. I don't read as many books. Well, I do. Maybe not as many, but I read differently because I think my palate cleansers are the things that I read as I'm reading novels. Mm -hmm. Because I like to read books that are self-help, that are, that are different um, at the same time that I'm reading a novel for two reasons. First of all, I, I my mind is scattered <laughs> and it goes so many different ways that I'm thinking about a lot of different things at the same time and reading a novel lets me kind of go somewhere else and and live in that story for a while but I don't like to live there all the time so when I'm not reading it I like to read other things that make me think about those things instead of thinking about the novel I'm reading things that make me think so that brings me to what I'm calling my palate cleanser that I apparently spilled wax on um, <laughs> that. but that's because I take this book with me a lot. I read it wherever I can. It is a Native American magic healing book called Vision Quest. And I found it to be very interesting. I've never done a Vision Quest before. And I came across this book because I own so many books that I don't know where they came from. Um, but I was like, Ooh, I bought, I picked this up because I was interested in it and let's read it. So um, the back of it said, are you reaching out for answers about your life? And I'm like, well, who isn't right? But Native American, uh, uh, the culture itself is so spiritual and I've always been very curious. I'm not a Native American. I, my son's dad was part Native American, but I never really learned much from him. He wasn't he wasn't around yeah. long. Um, and he wasn't I've, really in tune, right? Right, no. And and I'm I'm very interested in their culture and their How their way started. of doing things. Yeah. And I don't know if you know anything about a vision quest, but in my experience, a vision quest was something that the warriors went and did to it, it's like their rite of passage. Like they're coming of. For a manhood, yes. Yeah. To become the warriors, to become the men from the boy. Um, however, what I've learned is that that's not true at all and that um, the history of vision quests is that they're used to become more spiritual, period. And that Native Americans did that individually and in groups and in family settings to take them to a higher spiritual level in their tribe. And some of it has to do with going off and doing things on your own. But others, uh, what I'm finding is things that I do already, like smudging with sage. There are other natural, there was a great article about smudging with sage. But 
great things about how to connect with your inner spirit, how to connect with your with your spirit guides, your nature spirit, how Meet to your inner spirit, mm -hmm. feel, feel your spiritual feel. energy. And it's a lot. I meditate already. I found that a lot of this is has to do with meditating mm -hmm. and a vision quest itself from what I gather from I've read about three quarters of this book um, is basically meditating. You are taking yourself to another plane. And that's what you do when you meditate. It's, it's kind of the absence of activity. Body. You try to take yourself away from all the chatter that's in your mind. And uh, people think that meditation is, oh, I can sit here and be quiet. But it is a constant, bring yourself back to the quiet. Bring yourself back. Because our minds are such that they do go off. That's the nature of our minds. It's the same thing in a vision quest. There are other things involved that you can do to make it kind of a ritual and I'm reading about it, and I, I don't know if I'm going to do it yet or not. But but this is I, what I would say, what I use as palate cleansers, one of them, to keep reading the horror I get to read all the time. So I would just say about this book, I, not necessarily reading this book, Vision Quest, but if you have something that stimulates your mind spiritually, that helps you to be, I feel like every day I'm on a quest to be a better person, and I like that about me, and these kind of things help me to do that. So... Yeah, that's a that's a palate cleanser and a spiritual healing at the same time. So I would just say, use what you have if you have something like this because it's only going to be beneficial to you. And what I think is that you sometimes you pick something up and you don't know how interesting it could be until you read about it. Vision Quest, this is a pretty interesting book, I think. Well, that's pretty neat. It's I like something that. I would read more than one time, you know, because... You mark your spots. Oh, I want to come, come back, back to this yep. and do this again or try yeah. that or try or this. I really yeah. like this. This mm -hmm. this part speaks to me, but it doesn't really right now. Like, exactly. I can't do anything with it right now. And that's right. how, that is the only way that my books get dog-eared because I don't Ooh. like bending even see it, huh? books and pages. But if I got to oh. come back to just something. Just like a little dink. Uh-huh. Just a little <laughs> just a tiny, tiny one because I don't like to ruin my books. Mm. See, everybody always is like, Okay pristine pristine books look at this look at how mine nice that book looks no i was gonna say mine are never pristine they're always like flayed right. out and yeah because we read them one. yeah i'm like people will show you i loved that book did you i read that one? book i loved oh that my book. gosh okay so oh. so one of the things that i was gonna say and i we've this is kind of like we're talking about the pellet cleansers uh natasha preston this if oh. this human ever stops writing, I will be forever upset because I go specifically to look for one of her books. Oh, when she's I a great am, writer. When I'm just like, I can't, I can't with a book, but I need to read something. And it's her because everything I can just, I can read her book in one sitting sometimes. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's I read that so one easy to read and so easy to imagine and all of her books and are like And it catches that. you. Yeah. And it's. It's harsh. So this one is about a girl that basically gets kidnapped and stuck in a cellar with other girls. Is her name Rose? Lily. Lily. That's right. He names all of his girls after flowers. So the guy that's keeping them, and I don't remember what they call him. Oh, he's got a certain name. Yeah, the... Uh, I don't remember either, but yeah, it's fitting. Yeah, I can't remember his name, but anyways, um, he's got these, he's got these girls trapped in the cellar and they're his girls. They are his girls. They all have their special, unique qualities. Um, one of them likes to cook. One of them likes to clean. They're one of them's very motherly. Um, it, it's all, they all have their place. They were all picked specifically because he likes the look of them. He likes their background. I mean, like he just, this, these are his girls. So he keeps them in the cellar. And of course, nobody wants to be locked up in a prison in a cellar. Even it doesn't matter how beautiful it is. They all try to get out. He so. plays house with them. Yeah. He so, comes to dinner. Yep. He comes he, to breakfast. Everything they're expected to do their certain duties. And he comes to see them daily and it's at a certain time and these certain things are expected. And, uh, I mean, they're in the middle of nowhere. So even banging on the walls or screaming or anything, nothing, 
helps and it just makes it worse because when he finds out about it, then he gets upset. He's, he's a big guy. He's, I don't know exactly what they made him out to be like, but I do remember he is pretty big in statue and, and muscular and he's not a pushover. That. Yep. He's, he's got himself well taken care of. So anyways, um, Natasha Preston, she makes great books. This is one that I picked right off the shelf because I, I've read it before. It always sticks with me. I think about this book a lot for some reason. Uh, I just, this kind of reminded me of the butterfly garden a little bit. Oh, kind sure. Of. Collecting girls. Yeah. Collecting girls. But, uh, they were butterflies. These are flowers. Yeah. I, I just feel like this one holds a little heavier for me because this one, I just like the style of writing. I really, really paralleled with this main character here with Lily. So. I like her writing also. And yeah. this one is, I I didn't read the other one, but this one made me, it scared me because it could happen. Yeah. So I, it, this could be a real story. They They get... It's they get yeah. you pretty good. Yeah. I feel like most of her stories are like that. Where if I've you never can, read anything else of hers, and now I want if, to. If you can imagine, I mean, if if you listen to true crime podcasts or if you know any true crime stories, you know that this stuff can happen. Yeah, and th it's this is terrifying. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, anyways, good one. That was a good one. That was a great book. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. We'll be bringing more of her because I like her too. So the next thing I have is way different than anything we've shown you so far. But I talked about last week that I like to collect. I think these are novels. They're graphic novels, but they're still stories. This one is called Then It Was Dark. I've read this one. Now we're talking about beat up books. You can see that I've read this one a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> but this is one of my favorite, besides my Walking Dead I have, there's so many chapters of them, but this is just one. It's an anthology. It's paranormal. Paranormal experiences, true ghost stories. And so the reason I've read this a number of times is because there's more than one story in here. There's a ghost story. Most of them are ghost stories, let me just say. But they're ghost stories like of real life. So um, one of them is uh, a, a soldier deployed in Iraq, and he's haunted by a Jewish mother uh, um they are one of them is a a preacher who uh who is haunted by demons and uh, i if i remember correct he was catholic um and an exorcism something happened with an exorcism and he was it attached to him yes Ooh. um so paranormal crazy but in in like a cartoon format and you know you're reading the comics so you read just the captions in the comics and it reads so quickly i was just gonna ask how the end of things that's just one of the stories but let's see how quickly do you read these because i feel like i this would just be like a 10 minute thing for me. yeah um <laughs> so it, when i have some free time and i have it sitting by my couch all the time i sit down for a while oh, just nice. to take a break i read a couple stories and leave it sitting down to read it next time so and although it is along the same lines as the horror and the the you know scary stuff that we like to read it still is kind of a palate cleanser because comics are fun no matter how you look at them even if they're scary they're still fun the graphics in here are amazing um I'm, i was just looking on here to see it just says peppermint monster press oh because it's many stories yeah not everybody so you can just see how many stories are in there and the author's names are in there and which page they're on i recommend if you can get your hands on a horror graphic novel they're fun to read I just enjoy reading them. Um, I share them. They're easy to share. Like you said, three minutes you can read through one yeah. of them. And you can be like, hey, this is a cool story. Read it real quick. Yeah. If you got somebody with you that reads. I enjoy these kind of things. I recommend I, them. I never read those. Never ever, huh? So it started one day that I, I came across a graphic novel. And I was like, I always loved comics when I was a kid. Mom used to give us the Sunday paper comics. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, oh, I'm going to try to read this and see what I think. And I was Ooh, like, that's wow. That's wicked drawing. Yeah. Some of them are just. And. So is it different illustrations through different stories? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So different artists. Yeah. Different oh, illustrations. Yep. Yes. So 
<clears throat> so you kind of get different authors' ideas of paranormal crazy and different artists' renditions of what that looks like. You know, and, and sometimes it goes along with the vision, the the what you've made up in your head, and sometimes it doesn't. But So that's kind of cool because instead of reading a book and just imagining the things are happening, you're seeing mm -hmm. you're how seeing they're drawing pictures. them. And mm -hmm. especially like the creepy crawlies, the Absolutely. demons and darkness. and that. Yeah, and, and you know, I think a cool thing about that is that you sometimes... We have a specific vision of what a ghost is, what a demon is, mm -hmm. what a, when they tell you about this and you're like, oh yeah, I can see that. But then you look at the picture and like, whoa, whoa, that, that, that wasn't was that? what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 I just, I recommend them for fun reading and you can do horror or not, but there are so many, so many graphic novels out there. Yeah. Manga. Oh, Lots yeah. Lots of people love manga. Yeah. I think my daughter. Yeah. She, she it's was great in it for stuff. a long time. It's great uh, stuff. I wonder if. Lexi's still into that. Please. I have a friend that is into the horror manga, and that's that's um, where I found manga manga interesting because I'm not into the video game kind of stuff. Yeah, but right. but the horror it intrigued me, and so it made me read it. There's some great horror mag mag manga out there. <laughs> Magna, magmar, magma, <laughs> liquid hot. <magma. laughs> All we need is freaking sharks with freaking Freak lasers on their freaking heads. Freaking lasers. <laughs> Now, if See? we're old because Cheers. I Let's guarantee you that nobody oh, come on. below my Who age throws really a know. shoe. Oh, come on. <laughs> that really hurt. Ouch, Charlie. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll talk about my last uh, oh. terrifying read. So I didn't read this book. You didn't? No. It read to me. No, I, I did the audio book. I did the audio book oh. on this. But uh, last, ha last House on Needless Street. I loved this book. I I love, 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 love this book. It says 50 best horror books of all time on the back of it. So I've heard a lot of people say that they didn't like it because I will say that this one is, it's probably why I like this book so much. It's weird. And you're getting the perspective of a little girl and a cat. So okay. you're reading from a cat's point of view and you're reading from a little girl's point of view. Yeah. And this little girl is, uh, she's not allowed to go outside. I'm just right here. She lives in a house that's boarded up on the end of Needless Street. It's the last house on Needless Street. She um, is not allowed to go outside. She is not allowed to uh, basically do anything. She has all these rules, and the rules are very strict. She can't play outside. She can't know anybody. She doesn't have any friends. She doesn't know the neighbors. She can. She's peeped outside and seen what's going on out there, but she is not allowed to talk to anybody. And at night she gets, uh, I'm trying to think of exactly how it goes. There, there are parts where she is like locked up. She is clearly unable to get out of where she's at. Um, the same thing kind of is happening from the different perspective of the cat. So the cat is telling you, their perspective of what's going on with the little girl hmm. and this man is in charge of the house so the man has the cat and the the little girl and he is the boss he's the one that says what you can and can't do he's the one that is basically in charge of everything um it's it is really good. So huh. it, it's so weird because it does have the perspective of the cat in there and you're reading chapters like back and forth. So the little girl talks and then the cat talks and then the little girl. So it gets a little confusing at times and maybe that's what sets people off of this book. Hmm. But it is so like the cat and the kid both live with this guy. And this guy is controlling and weird and like I, it's just it is just out of here. It's out landish it's crazy i mean who has a perspective of a cat 
anyways. I mean, yeah. how do you write a perspective of a cat? That's kind of how this book went. When I read it, okay, I didn't read it. I listened to it on audio. And when I listened to it, they have like the different voices so you can tell the two apart. I feel like that was easier for me than reading the actual book because it did get a little weird where it, uh, you're going from one perspective to the other and you're not really sure what's happening. But it's creepy it's crazy you don't understand why things are happening the way they are you don't know why she's being controlled in this way and why you know this guy isn't letting her do anything she talks about a lot she just wants to go outside and ride a bike she's never ridden a bike and she's not allowed to go outside so it's like no the world is bad it's you can't go out there mm. but it, it's pretty fucked up and I, I loved it. I love that it came from the two perspectives and how it is intertwined and how it ends up. It's just, it's so good. I loved it. Stephen King loved it too. Mm -hmm. I know. I love when, <laughs> I love when he writes on it. What did it say? It says a true nerve shredder. A true nerve shredder. I mean, Stephen King knows nerve shredder. <laughs> It's good. I can't really Have you read the stand. I can't really. Actually, I haven't. That one's like this big, so I, it's one of those that I look at and I'm like, another right. day, another day. It's a great story. I've heard great story. So, um, anyways, I don't want this one. I'm kind of vague about, but I don't want to give too much mm. about it great. away. I'm gonna have to read it. I think it's best to stay vague. So very, very good though. I think about this a lot and I'm like, who the fuck writes from a perspective of a cat? So you read this one <laughs> and tell us what you think down yeah. there. I mean, we I want to know. I know. I've heard uh, some people are like, I can't, I just can't with this book. It's so stupid. But yeah, she's, she's written Is it any, Sundial and Little Eve. And does I, it have anything to do, are the cats in all of them? Because her name is Catriana. So I didn't know if maybe that had anything to do with are there cats in? No, it's just a black miss? kitty cat. Black no. cats are the best. They are. Yep. So anyway, interesting. I recommend, but I do not want to go into too much detail because you got to read it. Anything away. So, last but not least, here correct. we end our beautiful day. Here we talking end talking of books. Yes, and on the lines of bettering yourself that I was talking about earlier and reading things that lift you up and, and try to encourage you. Um, I read, yes, Courage to Change every single day. I've been doing it for two years. Okay, I skip days occasionally. I do. I'm lazy sometimes. Um, and I don't read it because I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> so this um, is a recovery This book, is right? Al-Anon Family Groups Recovery. Yes, Courage to Change. I read it because, well, Al-Anon's main ideal is one day at a time. Um, and I feel like in life, we all try to rush forward or worry about what's going to happen or what has happened, how we can change. And, and I am on a path at this point in my life to live today, live in the now. And I think one day at a time helps you do that, to think about the day you're in. And this book is just encouraging every day. It has got something for every single day of the year in it, as you see, it gives you your dates. Um, and most of the time I read my day before I go into work, but I did not read this one today because I was going to share it with you tonight. And I'm not going to read the whole thing for September 23rd because that's where we are today, but I'm going to read what it says down here as today's reminder. Um, so if you don't know anything about Al-Anon, Al-Anon has steps and you do one through 12 steps to get clean and help you whatever the is supposed to help you do quit <laughs> drinking really and, yeah. and but um so throughout this it talks about step this helps with that and step this helps me do that and the fifth step admitting to god or ourselves one of okay so the cool thing i find to be about al-anon is that you don't have to believe in god it's not preaching to you it's just saying Think of your higher power. Yeah, Think of the, the universe. What humanity. is in this universe that that helps you to feel a little less alone? Um, in my perspective, I feel like we're all, we come from the energy of this universe. And the people that are in our lives and have been in our lives are part of that energy. And they're always with us. We're always part of the energy of the people we have because energy is ongoing interactive it never, stops, it never right? ends right energy doesn't die it just remanifests itself in other ways um 
And that helps me to feel okay with life and death and loss and love and all the crazy crap that you got to go through all the time. In all life. your heavy feelings. I yes. feel you. You're pulling at me with your heavy so, feelings. Stop it. No, <laughs> because this kidding. makes them better. And um, I don't know. You could tell maybe from me, but I've been told many times that sometimes I'm just way too freaking happy. <laughs> They just don't know what I'm taking. That's why. I... No. <laughs> um, I am sickeningly happy sometimes. I am a positive, uplifting person, and I like to be that. But I use things like this to help me be positive and uplifting. So the last thing for today from Courage to Change, September 23rd, says, Today I will let it begin with me. I do not have to accept unacceptable behavior. I can begin by refusing to accept it from myself. I can choose to behave courteously and with dignity. My freedom and independence do not depend on any acts of defiance or confrontation. They depend on my own attitudes and feelings. If I am always reacting, then I am never free. That reminds me of something my mom always said. Mm -hmm. Nobody makes you feel anything. You allow them. You allow them to control That's you. your feelings. And your, those are your feelings, yes. And that reminds me of something that I heard today about... Um, if you don't like me, that's a you problem. <laughs> damn right. Because I'm damn likable. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Well, that's our show for today. Shall we have one more? Cheers. Clink. Have a great night. Clink. Or a great have a day. Good one. Or wherever you are listening. Bye. Bye.